Following the Operation Hailstone Raid in February 1944, the US Navy followed up with another smaller attack in late April of the same year. No large ships were lost in this raid, but a number of smaller vessels were not so lucky. One was the Hina Maru II, seen here burning on the western side of Oman Island. The wreck is easily visible from the surface and makes a good snorkel dive. In the early days of diving in truck, she was known as the Gun High Wreck. Pictures of the weapon in the shallow water appeared in numerous dive magazines around the world, and the gun was almost as famous as the tanks on the San Francisco Maru. It now lies on the sea floor. Looking at her remains from the surface suggested she deserved a closer look. Interesting as these small wrecks are to dive, there is never a great call to visit them. As such, many of the dive guides, even the most experienced ones, are not that familiar with the positions of these small wrecks. Great shot. On this dive we had Mackenzie. Following the retirement of the legendary Chenny Tipwick in 2013, Mackenzie became Blue Lagoon's longest serving dive guide. Chenny and his boat driver Ansau were assigned to us at the beginning of our first project in 2011. Another of the wrecks was known as the Inter-Island Ferry. Basically, it was a steel-hulled fishing boat similar to these vessels that had been taken over by the Japanese Navy. We were keen to record these wrecks, so we asked Mackenzie to take us there. It had been a while since his last visit, so we did a series of runs over the area, looking over the side of the boat, before the location was found. This wreck is perfect for that second or third dive of the day. Almost intact and resting in 24 metres or 80 feet, it's an easy swim over her. There are a few compartments a diver can just get into, some interesting artefacts and lots of marine life. It was just a brief sentence in Dan Bailey's book on the wrecks of Truck Lagoon about another wreck close to the patrol boat that initiated the idea to search for it in 2017. He lists the vessel as a water carrier between the islands. It was likely the wreck had not been visited in over 20 years. During lunch at Funamara Island following an earlier dive, Max discussed searching for it with Mackenzie. Mackenzie was unaware of it, but agreed that we head for the western side of Oman Island and make an attempt to find it. Starting at the first patrol boat, the search began, snorkeling, the bottom clearly visible some 24 metres below. Our 20 minute search yielded success, and about 100 metres from the patrol boat, Max spotted the wreck. The vessel sits in 27 metres or 89 feet, with her stern facing the shore of the Man Island.
Her propeller is covered in orange fans and it makes an excellent photographic subject. This is a larger vessel than the first dive. This picture of the Oimaru, a deep sea trawler, is almost identical to this vessel. She too would have had a name, but it remains covered in years of marine growth. Bailey's book mentioned that it was first discovered in 1972 and rediscovered by him in 1997. She lay undisturbed until our effort to find her some 20 years later. How did you go? Wreck Discovery? What a great little dive that was. After an earlier dive, we decided to call in for lunch in a dive with the sharks off the appropriately named Shark Island. A group of local teenagers were spearfishing as we pulled up to our anchoring position. All of us commented how superb the scene looked. After a swim, we descended down to deeper water, just off the north side of the island. In great viz, we sat on the edge of the reef and watched the show. Hoping to get some footage on the surface, we used some bait to lure the sharks close to the boat. One of our divers had a GoPro attached to a pole. But for how long? It was certainly great entertainment. Even the local guys stood close by watching the show. <laughs> Proving there is more to Truck Lagoon than just shipwrecks. <laughs>